Welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green. This is the first in-person interview I've done because when the channel started, the pandemic was happening. People had to stay home. This was really just meant as something to entertain people while you were at home. And so we had all these rock stars on their cell phones and trying to figure out uh, flip cameras. And we put together some pretty amazing interviews. But I'm excited that today, for the first time, first guest in person, the one and only the legend, Stephen Piercy, is here. I don't know about that legend, but yes! Oi, hello. I think you've earned the legend title. Well, I didn't get a badge button or sticker yet. It's in the it's any one of those, I'll, I'll believe it. I'm sure it's in the mail. So <laughs> we are here at Stephen's house in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to Las Vegas. You're a new resident. Yes, I am, and we love it here. Me and the dear uh, Miss Truth and Dare, and it's great. It's beautiful. It's, it's more my speed right now, and I'm I'm ready to go. Your whole life, California. catch me at the track. <laughs> Your whole life, California, San Diego, Los Angeles. Right. So this is a big move for you. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, look, I've been on the road for uh, forty years, fifty something. <laughs> I don't know. So wherever I lay my hat, even when I had houses in the early days, I'd stay at old town. So I don't know; it's all the same to me. But these are the roots, and it's way cool. I think people love seeing your social media because they love to see your pets. They oh, love yeah. to see your life. Yeah, the one they call Bear. Yeah, the one they call Bear. Well, there's a lot of stuff in works with uh, us, Top Fuel Entertainment, and a lot of it has to do with a little reality, a little show, and it's uh, to be announced. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, and you put out a little teaser. Things. You put out a little teaser of that you and Christy uh, put together a little documentary about your life, sure, which definitely showed some of the behind the scenes for the first time because you've always been pretty private. Yeah, well. <laughs> We only live twice, my friend, and, and you know, when you get help, you get smacked around with some health things, and you kind of get to wake up and go, hey, how do I want to live? How do I want to do this? You once told me yeah. we did all the same crazy shit that Molly Crew did. We just didn't film. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, but I don't, I don't know who's to say who was classier at it, but, uh, yeah. I think everybody back went in there at the... Uh, debauchery pin, you know. Well, so we, we're going to get into a few of this, but first I got to ask you, do you watch the Pam and Tommy uh, TV show? Yeah, I think it's funny. Um, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> That's what they want to see. I mean, look, my cock talks too. Mm -hmm. Now, you know Tommy Lee, obviously, I'm known him for a long time. With that gentleman. Do you feel like the guy does a good job? The guy doing it? Yeah, I think he's, he's, he's pretty close. Yeah, pretty so close. Sebastian Tommy's Stan. a little skinnier <laughs> and a little taller. Yeah, a little taller. Uh, I think it's really funny too, and I think that's going to be. Uh, it reminds me of the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the, the Tarantino movie, where you take something that you know what happened, you know what happened to Sharon Tate, but yet they twist it into their own story. So now Pam and Tommy are most fictional characters in this show. Oh God, enough of them. Next, <laughs> okay. So we uh, and we we're talking about your health. So you, yeah, your documentary talks about. Did you have a battle with cancer? Mm -hmm. So you tell everybody where you're at now. Well, it's just a, a, a process now of uh, management. And that's, just, that's pretty, I got lucky. And, and that's why when I do, now when I do these cameos, I have people asking me certain things and stuff. And it's brilliant because I get to go, well, yeah, you know, don't, you know, uh, you can, you know, beat uh, somewhat cancer. You know, I mean, it's probably in all of us. I don't know. Anyway, I took it and turned it around, and I'm doing okay, and just trying to uh, give support to anybody else, too. You know? One of the messages that you want to spread is that people should get tested, because you've got a blood test. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, and it, it stemmed from uh, hepatitis, and people probably have hepatitis. I'm not a doctor, but I'll tell you, it's a fact, and, and through a checkup for that, you could find out whether well, you're screwed or you're okay, or figure it out. <laughs> I mean, you know, squeezes out. So. Do you believe your hepatitis came from a blood transfusion? It did. It did come from one. Yeah. Because you when I was when when um, I had my surgeries as a kid, that's how far back that went. So I actually I actually had it for years and years to my young adult until I found out. Oh shit! You got this, and reluctantly, uh, you know, found out early and and uh, took care of it. 
Yeah. That's it. Went in and did their thing, removed it, uh, what, what they saw, or could, you know, get it. That's it. So I'm under management. It's all cool. We're rocking. You are the only person I know who would play a sold out show at the Whiskey and Go and then get up at 8 30 in the morning to go get your blood work done. Yeah. <laughs> Got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I, 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 anyone else would be sleeping. I mean, this is this is the sober you though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, we're having a good time. It's all management. Everybody just take care of yourselves, and that's it. You know. And then we get to see people play and go to concerts. And thing is, you know, with me is I'm just presenting in a different way because I'm not going to do this forever. I'm not going to be yelling at you or being on stage, and I don't intend to be. You know. But uh, as long as I'm around and can kick it, I want to go out and yell at you and have a good time. So you got to be there and take care of yourself. Well, I think that's a really important message. Because sometimes I interviewed Doro the other day, and she says her goal is to die on stage. She wants to be like <laughs> oh, she wants to be like Lemmy. She wants to play until so she can't play anymore. I know that Hardcore. is not your intention. Well, I think the way she meant it was she doesn't want to literally die on stage, but she might have, you know, <laughs> I don't know. That's something you'd expect from Wendy or Williams. I don't know. But hey, you know, we all want to do it uh, as long. You can do it as long as the weird thing is here. I'll, I'll tell you is this is the strangest occupation in the first place, right? <laughs> to sing for people, to yell at people, play guitar. And so, you know, just in that element alone, it's what you, you know, it's how, how you take care of yourself. And, if, you know, you want to be around forever and do this into your 70s. And, you know, I mean, I'm doing it into my 60s. And yeah, it's I, okay with me. You you're know, gonna be 60, you're going to be 66 years old this uh, this year, which is yeah. Thanks for reminding me. I'm I, sorry. It's I, on Wikipedia. I, 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 know. <laughs> I don't think about it. I actually don't. I mean, because we're around here, we're young and we're about we're like kids here. No, you don't live. You don't live like an old person. <laughs> I travel with you. you you're yeah. excited to have a root beer float after oh, the show. Man. We're and not. It's, it's like things. we can have coffee at like three in the morning mm -hmm. and it's all good. Yeah. No, you don't live like someone, and I don't think people would know your age. But you also have to think, rat professional career, 40 um, plus years. Ooh, yeah. You could not have thought that you would be doing this 40 something years later. Actually, no. And on, you know, on that topic, nor do I expect to or want to. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're speaking about coming out of the cellar and rat, well, Rat will never play again. You know, you might never see Rat again, and uh, that would be it. You're walking us right into the state of oh, trap. Rat. rat. That's right. The, the rat, rat, trap. rat trap. The state of the Rat Union address that everyone has been waiting for, because it changes all the time. The world of Rat yeah. in the last few years, even though there haven't been that many performances, there has been a million different stories. Yeah, it's all bullshit. I'll, I'll lay it to you straight. Well, yeah, you'll, you're going to lay it down straight. We we know that. Uh, so we know that Robin Crosby has passed away. Yeah. Well, obviously he's been gone look, quite some time. The bottom line to to me, uh, you know, there will never be, and it's just impossible without Robin. And I tend to, as I'm putting together this live rat record, actually, you're, you didn't hear it first, but probably. Uh, I only want to do the years uh, 83 to 91, the years, you know, that's, that's rap to me. And, you know, 40 years later, and people can go, oh, yeah, rap's still out there. And rap, they, a lot of people probably don't even know who rap really is, you know, or these members that are coming and going. And, and that's something that, you know, we never wanted in the first place is to have a carousel of, of musician play. So, you know, it's got to stop somewhere, and here's where it stops, you know. Well, you've made it clear that you want the original band to get back sure. together, but there's a lot of differences, and I don't find any possible way, I've mm -hmm. done the math over and over again, to yeah. find four members of rap, former members of whatever they're called now, mm -hmm. that can actually get in a room together. I can find one and <laughs> one, maybe one and one, but for some, and I'm going to say, Stephen, this is me saying, not you. Yeah. There is always one member of rap that I find is the common 
denominator in the problem. There's one person that they all blame. It's yeah. me. I mean, no. It's not you. And I'm not going to say who it is. And I'm going to leave it up to people to guess. It's well, probably not who you think I'm thinking. Yeah, well, I mean, look, there's never going to be. I can actually say, and I've actually put the feelers out. And do I want to go out and represent uh, such a, a good, you know, was a great thing, a great rock band, and is a good rock band in hindsight, uh, uh, without the elements. And that would be a Warren Demartini, number one. Uh, so as long as Warren is, you know, content, uh, that's brilliant. Then we'll leave it at that. If, if you know, I can, I can go out and, and you're hearing the same songs with me singing. And, you know, it's, it's, that's what I don't like about going out as rat with these side musicians. You know, no disrespect to some of them. <laughs> you know, coming and going and this guy, no. So I, I tend to, right now, as we speak, say no. Enough is, you know, enough. And, and just see what happens, you know. Now, as a fan, and I'm just speaking as a fan, I mean, I work with you as well, but I would love to see something like Piercy Demartini, and oh, maybe a few select shows during the year. You guys, play not up together. to me, not yeah. up to me. Well, but Warren's watching. He watches yeah. this. I know he does. Well, I'll tell you what. Look, I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't think I've left any stone unturned with that boy. You know, we still have unfinished music, and this he and likes that, smoke but, signals. But, if we if we, <laughs> if we get a fire in the backyard, he might see it or a, a sign. But I mean, bless all these guys. You know. No, no big deal. I'm doing my thing. There are songs I wrote, and I make no excuses. I'm out there to kick your ass, and that's what I do. You don't like you to rat and roll my way, but, you know, until, I mean, I would do a record if it was the original guys. Otherwise, you'll never see another Rat Studio album. Never, ever. Uh, nor do I think there should be a, a, a rat out there unless it's uh, the original people. You don't like to talk about the drama, and I understand this. It's no. a headache. But everyone in Rat, in one way or another, has sued another member. No, here, here, it's like this. As I was talking to uh, my, my uh, other here, uh, we're not just, there's nothing dysfunctional about Rat, what people think, right? Is this correct? <laughs> he always tells me this. I don't believe it. It's not, it. you know, I used to make a joke about it. Oh, we're, we're not the most dysfunctional. No, we're not. But then again, it's like, she made a point. You're not dysfunctional at all. <laughs> it's everybody around you. So that's where it's at. Everybody has sued everybody. There's been a lot. But you guys always get back together anyway. You guys sue each other. You guys write books about each other. You curse each other out. And somehow you survive. Can it happen again? I'm not sure. I don't think anybody's suing each other now. So, But there's so much uh, restructuring and things going down. It's like... I'd rather keep that. I'd rather keep those things in the cellar, just like the band right now. You know, so no rat, no rat, no rat. No so, rat. and then everybody would go, whoa. Well, yes, there is. Well, yeah, there is a band called Rat. There was for many, many years. Great band too, by the way. Well, I the, sing their songs. The history of Rat is alive and well. People are discovering all the time. Mm -hmm. Cobra Kai, uh, all these TV shows, Geico commercials. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rat music has survived. And you perform it. Your set list is like the greatest hit set. I always say. It's like ant music. Everyone should be so lucky to go, what do I play tonight? Well, I just pick yeah. up a greatest hits or I just throw it dark. Because everyone knows every song um, that you play. And they're yeah. so happy to hear them. Uh, yeah. Except now, well, on that topic, you know, throwing in, you know, solo songs. And it's a drag that, you know, some of the best songs I like singing from Rad, I can't do in the set. Because I want you to hear my solo stuff. I want you to hear, you know, maybe an arcade song. Or if I, you know, get an itch, I want to play a pre-song. I don't know. But it's it's just what I do. It's hard to fit it all but in. It, it really is. And to accommodate, you know. Uh, but I am actually, on this topic, is the reason why I'm putting together a legacy record this year. Uh, Stephen Pierce legacy record. And the hardest thing for that is actually picking the songs, the year, the, the type of recording, be it live or studio, uh, two track, four track, 16. I mean, I have so much picking and choosing to do. It's ridiculous, you know. I like, like I said the other day, I have a version, uh, a couple, 
a version of uh, Dr. Rock with, uh, which goes back to Mickey Rat with Chris Hager's, uh, Chris Hager on doing a solo, with George Lynch doing a solo, with Warren doing a solo, you know, with who knows else doing a solo. Oh, oh Eric, you know, so this is what I'm dealing with, with the legacy. You know, the record. So I like it's fun. It's been fun. Then the solo record, finally. The That'll be number six. The solo record, the six solo. But record. the reason I like the legacy is that sometimes asking people, because there's young people discovering rap all the time. Yes. So to tell them to go and listen to five solo records is a lot. But to yeah. have a compilation sure. legacy yeah. is really like yeah. a great way to start. When people go to Spotify. I don't think people listen to full records as much yeah. as they used to. They sure. kind of go around. Sure. So I think you got a great combination. I know you got some deals and, and we can't talk about it yet, but there's some good yeah. stuff coming with that. Yes. So legacy compilation, yes. new solo record. You're always writing songs. And always, always. And also, I'm, I've been putting together this rat uh, live record. I mean, I have every bootleg on the planet and I want to put this out. Maybe a couple of early songs. And I'm sure I have everybody's blessing. Uh, and there's some amazing live stuff, but not the, the terrible stuff. Because we actually did record with great gear out there through years, you know. And some guys slipped in and out of there with some great, you know, recordings. And anyway, I want to put that out. Do those guys have to sign off on that kind of thing? Uh, not necessarily, no. But anyway, looking forward to the, my legacy. And it's not like the Before and Laughter, which I released in 20, 2000, I think. Which is available on your website. Yeah. Oh, yes. We signed it and everything for you coming up soon. Um, but it's kind of cool. Uh, that, but it, I barely scratched the surface. And that's why this one's important. There'll be about 20 plus songs on it, going from Mickey Rat Days 77 to uh, 2022. Well, I feel like we try to get out of the cellar, but we're still in a little bit. So I got to ask uh, some of these questions that, first of all, Patreons sent yeah. me. And your Patreons are the most important people. There is a Stephen Piercy Patreon coming very soon. So you can stay tuned for that. But so here's a couple questions that I got. Will wants to know Will. if any of the influences of the early guys, we're talking about the Mickey Rat guys, yeah. if that showed up in the later versions of Rat. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. But there were songs that I wrote by myself, like Direction, In the Direction. Well, I mean, I still, I put up recently a couple songs that were uh, Mickey Rat that were written for Rat that turned into those songs. Uh, one I'd like to re record out of the summer, called Out of the Summer. And uh, there's a song called Reach for the Sky, which was never released but recorded. Uh, demoed and that I, I I would really like to get out there. Was it for the Reach for the Sky? It was, it was for Out of the Cellar. Out of the Cellar. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. So the, so I have out. some good stuff, you know, in the archives, and that'll be like, hey, Warren, what do you want to do? <laughs> you want to help sequence this thing? You know, we'll see what happens. Maybe working on past projects is easier than working on new projects. Mm. With those guys, I take them all. Oh yeah. 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 Right. Right. I also <laughs> say about that early style when people see you play guitar. I think yeah. they can realize that the way you play the songs is the way that rap songs are meant to be played. Yes, and <laughs> most of the time those guys play it wrong. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Because why? There's not a Robin in there and there's not a Warren in there. No disrespect again, but I mean, Eric Ferentino is, is like the secret weapon for me. I mean, the boy is just talented beyond belief. Uh, probably gets about as close. He's been with you, you know. since 2005. You yeah. are loyal to the people you, you work with. Yeah, and we write so much stuff, and he knows exactly what I want to where, you know, I mean, I throw my hand into the writing, too, not just the lyrics. And as he does, too, he'll come up with a lyric thing or a melody, and, and that's what's great about the solo stuff. The next solo record is going to be fucking brutal. That's all I got to say. It's going to go. And when can we expect that? end up with a big smack in here. 23? Uh, I hope at the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Plenty of songs. I mean, it's it's overly frustrating, but that's why you got the COVID tapes. I went in and recorded anyway, you know, and all that I want, the best out of the bunch, is going to go on the uh, legacy. Right. right. So we're going to hear that. And so just to wrap up on that sound, though, from the early days, if sure. I was going to play a song like You Think You're Tough, I would play bar chords. I would probably play the top two, three strings. Sure. When you play those songs, you hit all of the strings, all the which songs. is part of the rap sound, especially in a song like that. Mm -hmm. That is what the, the, and you see people in cover bands play them wrong all the time. Sure. 
Um, and I think that... And they get the lyrics wrong, by the way. You guys, all the lyrics are fucked up. You get them all wrong. You yeah, got to include day, them. You have since day one. That's why I never put them on the, in the records, because I wanted people to figure it out. You know, like, you know, I, I did a Zeppelin record when I was young, and I'd go, okay, wow, this is great. No lyrics, right? And you got to figure it out. And, well, I wanted to do the same thing during Rat's trip. And uh, I did it, but there were two records that they, I was pretty much forced to write lyrics to. Okay, well, we're going to get to that. that that's a, that's a, that's a, and I didn't like it. They call that a tease. We're going to find out about that in a second. But, uh, uh, and we, I want to, this is on a similar note, too. Now, Thomas yeah. is also a patron. His question is, he knows that you have a good collection of old live recordings and bootlegs. He wants oh, to know, tons. is there anything with Jake playing that yes. hasn't been seen? Yes. And is there a chance? Yes, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And also, it was said that we never co-wrote a song together, and I believe Jake even said it. But yes, we did. I did uh, help put lyrics into a song of his, uh, Matt Thorne, uh, and some other character he wrote the song with. And that those appear on the Garage Date Days, which I'll probably put out again uh, sometime. But it's Jake, the whole thing. And uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah. yes, there is a song, yeah. What about a video with Mark Torian playing guitar? There's a couple photos. Uh, I have of him doing the Roxy. Uh, and this is another song that I want on the Legacy, or it's going on there, the song Reach for the Sky, which right. I said Rat recorded uh, for Out of the Cellar. Well, Mark Torian co-wrote that with me and Rob. <laughs> So lo and behold, people, Mark's like, what? But he already knows. We, <laughs> I already told him, I love this song. Do you remember we wrote it with Robin? And we did a great demo version of it. And I'm going to tweak it, and we're going to hear it. And that's it. All right, before we get completely out of the cellar, people always ask. They want to hear you rate the rat the cat. records. <laughs> <laughs> they want to hear you rate the rat records and... Uh, and give your opinion. I saw yeah. Johnny oh, Ramon. Please. I saw Johnny Ramon once. He's very hard. He's a big critic of his own music. He went through all his records and he gave them a rating on a scale of one to five. Let's see what we can do. Starting with the EP, which is going to be approaching its 40th anniversary. It came out in 1983. And the EP is going to see life next year. Just stay tuned. Because it's not available right now. No. And everybody's bootlegged the hell out of that, too. The collect, I love the collectible stuff, the original. Um, but it will be released next year, and you'll find out through me where, when. Now, let's rate it on a scale of one to five. This is an early well, recording. I would have to rate that at a hundred. So that's a one five. To ten, and Stephen talk. <laughs> yeah, but you rate a one to five, I'd say uh, a ten. Heavy, heavy record, different sound. You play some of those songs live, people get excited. You got yeah, it. Yeah, it's, I call it the punk record, but that was Mickey Rat. All of those songs are Mickey Rat songs from 1977. And to Ben in the set, Rat set to this day, some of them. You think you're tough, obviously. Mm -hmm. But we, Robin and I wrote that, You Think You're Tough, in 80, late 82, uh, early 83. He brought me the riff, and I... We did our thing, and there it was. Who decides to have Juan sing the, the, the little break part? Probably Ed Stasium or one of the guys who produced the uh, EP. Yeah. I mean, we went in there and just did it. Mm -hmm. It was just like, <laughs> you know, our manager, Marshall World, you know, we got a day in the studio. Okay, well, I believe it was a holiday, like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas, and we just went in there, recorded it, and we were out the door. It was like, <laughs> one, two, thank you. And it sounds like, you know, we gave it all we got, you know. We're giving that one a five. Yeah. Who are you? I, mean, I give it a ten. Yeah. Well, it's, well, it's, it's a five. It's, but. Out of the Cellar 1984, this is the record that's going to change your life. It's going to change everyone that involves Brad's lives. Yeah. Yeah. I, a five, a ten. You know, just for the reason it was our just real first record. And the fact that it uh, did what it did, we didn't expect it. I mean, Robin and I used to always joke, like, we'd be happy to go fucking aluminum or something, you know, <laughs> not gold. Or, and lo and behold, it's still 
you know, doing its thing. Multi-platinum, and obviously everybody knows that it goes on and on. I think younger people discover rap music, and they discover uh, Twisted Sister and Van Halen, but they don't sure. realize that these bands were on MTV. Yeah, it was the shit. We have talks about that all the time. The real L.A. scene, the real, you know, meat and potatoes, where it started, Motley, uh, Quiet Riot Rat, uh, Wasp, uh, you know, uh, led by the mighty Van Halen, but um, yeah. But Very, you could watch. Right, I can dig it. I can respect those guys and then rap. <laughs> but you could watch MTV though and see Prince and Michael Jackson. Yeah, and Madonna. then Rat and then Madonna sure. and Duran Duran. And so sure. Rat was his, at that point. It wasn't just a heavy metal band. No, it evolved into a, a popular rock band like all the others did too. Yeah, it's interesting. Then it got a little out of context, you know, so to speak. But that the, the eighties. I mean, man, we we. Uh, I love it. I mean, to this day, it, it's like, it's, it's so easy to embrace, you know. Well, yeah. It <laughs> that was, period, that whole, because of what you just said, all these different arts, Prince, Jackson, Rat, you know, you can see anything on MTV, Motorhead, uh, Van Halen. Okay, so you're cranking these out, 83 DP, 84 on the cellar, 85, um, Invasion of Your Privacy. Um, Invasion, I give that a five. Mm -hmm. I mean, the EP to me is like probably the best thing because not just because I wrote it all. <laughs> and no, uh, um, I Invasion is a great record. It, it really is. There was uh, different supersonic shit going on there. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's a great record. I love still those songs on that. Yeah, Based on people's those. age. They discovered the band at different points. Yes. So you made fans. You're, you're still making new fans. But I well, think sure. That's why it bothers me when somebody were to see that that marquee and that name, Rat, and not get what they expect. Mm -hmm. You get where I'm going? 100%. It's called integrity. And uh, it's a tough thing. Okay. But anyway, Invasion kicks ass. Totally. Five. 86, Dancing Undercover. Ooh, Okay. All right, this is mine and Robin's record, actually. Uh, even those guys will, you know. I like it. I give it a five. It, we wanted to, not the best five, but we wanted it to be different. We thought that uh, Invasion was a little too, getting too polished, right? And then, and then you had the emulators, the little crews and the little rats and the other you know, bands coming out around that time, right? So we just tried to make a left turn and rough it up a bit. And hey, some of the I love that record, and I find fans mm -hmm. when they talk about songs that they want to hear. A lot of times they go to that record. Um, it's it, uh, it's that, and it's that's one that maybe you play the least of it right now, but that could always change. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. and that's eighty six. I like drive me crazy. I would love to play some of those songs again back in the you know we did the arenas we would be doing like drive me crazy and enough is enough and those other songs and it was it was great good yeah. songs but you you and i spoke you 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 were open with the idea of maybe having a thing on your website official com, where there'd be a few songs like the rolling stones <laughs> right? and fans can vote which one sure. they want and sure. it might be a really and good i'll one. make a set i'll do the set i've said it before you know make write me a set so <laughs> anything goes here, you know, we don't we, we don't mind fucking around, so it's okay. Now, 87, no record. 88, uh, Reach for the Sky. Now, I have a feeling this is where oh, things oh, this is change a little. Yeah, this is where things changed a little. I think producer, number one, if correct. Um, yeah, that was an interesting record. I kind of, uh, me personally, uh, that's a tough one. I'll give it a four. Mm -hmm. And uh, what came out of there? Way Cool and stuff like that? I think Way Cool is the hit off that record. Uh, um, I Want a Woman? I Want a Woman, yeah. But it didn't have Body Talk? No, that's, I think that's uh, the four. The four. Um, wow, Reach. Well, again, you know, we wanted to get away from what I would say was becoming so oversaturated in, in the mid 80s around 87 and plus a lot of shit going on inside of this 
you know, this uh, band <laughs> and touring the hell out of ourselves, you know, and, and, but that was the best we could do. And Hey, you know. did, did people tell you, you got to have a ballad? I mean, I know you had yeah, one step close to my did. heart before. Sure. But around reach, did they tell you you need a ballad? Yeah, we never did, except I did write closer to my heart. Mm -hmm. I believe, Great right? Song. Is that on there? Yeah, I gave them that. And, uh, but I feel like at this time, everyone was cranking out the love song. And no, it was so wrong. It. it was so wrong. We didn't, we didn't want to do it. Not that That's the same thing, that uh, reason why we didn't want to do um, live, release live. Um, DVDs mm -hmm. when that was the you know the, buzz, the, the yeah. thing to do because we wanted you to come and see us and feel it and smell it and taste it and you know so we're, we're given happy. we're given reach of four that's the first time of we've four. got on but yeah. now yeah, 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 yeah. another year we're off eight and nine now ninety comes around oh detonator now this is a this one is some people love it some people not as much mm -hmm. let's see what the, what the man thinks wow detonator. Hmm. Well, I'll give Detonator a four, you know, between Reach and Detonator, um, then again, with Detonator, there wasn't much Robin Crosby involved. He didn't play on it very much, right? No, which was really a drag, and so hence you got... Um, Warren, who was becoming a, a trying, you know, he's playing different shit, you know, he was getting a little, you know, out of the Crosby, <laughs> you know, rock element, you know, we're a hard rock band, we're a rock band. He wanted to trip around and play some, and I abided, I thought Warren's riffs were great, I can work wonders with his guitar. And that's what happened on Detonator, we just took over. Warren and I had said, there, just write the song, see, so what, every, see what everybody time. else has, pretty much. Yeah, there's no outside players. No, no, no. And again, different producer. And, and you know, we wanted to not be pigeonholed or not be something. Who knows? We were trying not to be, even though we could never get out of what we actually were. The singles, Shame, 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 and Love and Use a Dirty Job. Yes, big productions. Uh, wow. Yeah, big productions, but not not to what we wanted. Why, if you've probably heard this many times, why is Giving Yourself Away not a big hit song? Wow, that is interesting. And only Japan released it as a single and made their own video, uh, which includes Liza. Really cool, it's out there. I don't know. I, I It was like hook up with... Uh, Desmond mm -hmm. to write some songs, right? a child. and then again, I had to keep reminding everybody, even earlier on. You know, we wrote our own songs. It doesn't guarantee, you know, uh, somebody coming in and writing your uh, uh, "Living on a Prayer" or something. You know, uh, but yeah, these outside writers, and it was cool because I was like, I was way open to it. You know, because I had already written with Jim Ballant. No, later on, I wrote with Jim Ballant. And I was digging writing with all these people. Um, so I embraced it. And Diane Warren, he brought in Diane Warren. I was like, well, So was that song, Desmond me? Child and Diane Warren? Yeah, and myself. And I was ecstatic. I was like, wow, this is fucking great. I get to write with these two major people. And I did. And I took everything I could in, you know. And that song was written pretty quickly. You know, what about we all just threw our bits in there. And, uh, what about the producing of your voice on that song? Because I feel like that's a little out of your normal comfort zone. Oh, the that song in particular? Yeah. The, hey. Yeah. yeah, it's possible. But Bo, Bo used to make me scream like a banshee when I didn't want to. So uh, it depends on what I can give you. Doesn't mean it's going to work live, kids. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that there definitely there's a lot of production to some of those songs and vocals yeah. over the place. And that's what we, try, we really tried to get away from. Not that we did a lot of it, because we everybody sang to some extent, you know. Uh, Robin loved it. He had that low, and Warren had the mid, and me, and then Once on and on, on, you know. Yeah. So it worked. But then again, yeah, it, 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 um, you can't give them the same thing all the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't want to. So I didn't want to. So hence that record, four. 
detonator floor. And this is a tough time because mm -hmm. Robin is going to leave the band. Or be, he's going to be sure. asked to leave, right? Well, yeah, we had some tough times there, unfortunately. And, and the fact that he was only on some stuff on that record. But Warren, you know, stepped up. And we all stepped up, pretty much. Michael Shanker steps in. in. Mm. For a live, bit. yeah, live. Yeah. Well, he does the MTV Unplugged with you, right? Yeah, he did Unplugged, and as as Fred Corey too guested on uh, Congos on on that. Mm -hmm. Congos, Congo. <laughs> right, and so, but so, uh, and you you so you're keeping it going. That MTV is a high profile Unplugged thing, mm -hmm. but I know it's different for you without Robin being there. Sure, it was. Yeah, yeah, sure it was, and that's when you can kind of get away with it. You know, um, but kind of getting away with it doesn't do it for me <laughs> at this day and age with, with the band called Rat, you know. But, yeah, I wish Robin was more involved with that. The, the band's, band's going to break up for the first time. I don't think grunge is really I, the reason, though. I, Most bands. No, it was, and it was not. It was not, but it was almost like a blessing in disguise that, you know, I kind of literally, I mean, literally went to the president of the label, Doug Morris, and said, I, you, you know, if we don't stop right here and now, we're going to start dropping like flies, and and that's it. And then it all stopped. Yeah, the first uh, pause in, the, in, in, in yeah. Rat Arcade comes along for you. Sure. A lot of things come along for you. We mentioned sure. Arcade. Frankie Wilsey uh, from the band Sea Hacks sure. is Fred still in your solo band to this day. Yeah, yeah. Fred Corey from yeah. Cinderella on drums. And uh, and it's Arcade was getting some play, and you toured with Bon Jovi. Our core, we did uh, uh, some dates, yeah. Um, yeah, well, now we're moving out of the cellar, right? Well, no, because we still got to go back to the All cellar. Right, we're stay in the cellar. we got to go back to the cellar. But as far, but as, for, uh, but as, far as uh, the Bon Jovi thing goes, Rat takes Bon Jovi on tour. Sure. And later, uh, John sings on Detonator as a backup? Yes, he did, actually. Well, that's John saying thanks, and that's way cool. Yeah. Because most of the bands that opened up for us are, are still afraid to say they opened up for us. <laughs> there were some big Paul ones. Paul Gass. Yeah. Say a couple of the big ones that, that was there. Uh, you forgot to. Mm -hmm. I, I'm still waiting for a fucking gold platinum record for one of those dummies. Mm -hmm. We're going to put the photo of that band right here. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so that's the little break. We give that to four. Now, um, Collage is a, is a compilation oh, album. Yeah, and uh, there's a story about, a good story about Collage. Well, you know, being out of, you know, did the arcade thing, and everybody kind of went their own way and, and rat, per se, and, and, you know, we're still doing business. You know, there's still stuff going on. You still have to make some decisions and the songwriters, this, that. And I just was a little more, you know, wanting to start an indie label and getting into things. And Or I had already created it in 95, uh, Top Flow Records. And I knew things were changing. And what I didn't like was seeing our, our catalog, you know, and not being happy. So I said, hey, Warren. You know, you want to get together and let's take a bunch of my songs, uh, Mickey Rat songs, and let's use this bit and that bit and put something out and refresh people's memory. Mm -hmm. And maybe go out and play. And they both happened. Collage came out independently. Uh, and we went out and did some shows. And hence started the next... This is, 90, <laughs> this is 97. Then come along, uh, 99. So this record oh, is just... Oh, my God. Now, this is the Portrait record. Portrait was with John Claude. It was kind of the hot thing at the minute, signing people up. John Claude or John Claude. <laughs> right, exactly. And uh, he gets you guys to make a new rap record. <laughs> yeah, he did. And so this is uh, 99, I believe. Is uh, Robbie Crane playing bass on that record? Yes, he is. Okay, so Juan is out. Yes, he is. We forgot Nobody Rides from Free from the Point Break, break soundtrack on way back. Mm -hmm. uh, which is... Fan, a, a song that fans really enjoy, but so yeah. so the poor <laughs> at least the fans of it. The, the portrait record though, uh, ninety nine. Tell me a little bit about that record. Well, do oh, I, I let's see. Um, well, <laughs> first you want to rate that fucking thing. I think you start. Yeah, I rate that thing a two, mm -hmm. and I mean it's just so. 
I mean, no disrespect to my fucking self or what I was trying to do, but, you know, it was one of those things we were just thrown into the situation. It's like, okay, not like we're supposed to be competing with these guys, you know, this new genre or whatever. Um, but when it, it, when it came to like, you're going to be writing with this person, you're going to write with that person and, and he's going to become a writer and your man. And then this guy, and we're like, what the fuck is this? You know, who, who signs that? Uh, whoever signed this. Right. John Claude and John Claude. John Claude and John Claude. I love John, by the way, but he but had intentions, you know, but you know, and, and uh, there were people we were put in to write with and I just, saw shit hitting the fan and just, you know, kind of just worked with it. Well, did, did, you the guys, best I could, did the best I wanted to, actually. Not that I could have. Did you guys need Jack Russell? It was an odd thing. Well, that is an odd thing. No disrespect to Jack. He's, he's a great singer. Um, uh, but he was brought in through uh, a song with Bobby and, and somehow the song, the song got presented and, and then it got like, okay, you're going to work on this. This is where I was telling you about the round table, you know, we'd sit around and they'd pick, they'd pick our songs. We're like, what the fuck is this? This has never happened to us in our career and it's not going to happen now. You know, we write our own songs. And, but anyway, it turned into whatever it is, so, you know, and no disrespect to anybody who worked their ass off on it. But I could really didn't like that that record and you know i tried i mean you know lauren did great stuff i actually heard a song the other day um what was it called uh, um well, that is i'm following them. there's some great songs on there but they're they're not rat songs they're not rat songs at all a problem that most fans go through from i've interviewed somebody every day is that Whoever writes the hit, there's somebody in the band who gets jealous and realizes there's more money for the guy who writes the song, and then all of a sudden they start to contribute ideas. They're not always the best ideas. Sometimes maybe somebody does, but I think this leads to and a lot of... That's what happened. Well, no, what happened is something like that. There's a lot you of know, Bobby It's like the or, door's open, and it's like, well, wait a second. Don't forget who, who set the standard for this the sound and the style and this writing, and, and there was not a lot of anybody on. Robin, Warren, it was just, um, you know, I don't even want to get into it, actually. There's a lot of odd Bobby Blotts and co-writing credits that come out Well, of that's no disrespect. No, I don't I mean they're bad. I'm just saying it's new. Sure, I had to try to say them, and, 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 or, or did, did my job. And, and, like, again, a lot of no disrespect going on here, but, uh, you know, did what you could, but I'll give that record a two. Two. Bo Hill did an interview recently and said a lot of these problems were happening back then as well with people wanting credit and things like that. You know, look, yeah. after you have a after you become something, something becomes becomes nothing. You know, and that's where it's at. That's ninety nine. Let's put that behind us too. Yes, two thousand and ten. You guys waited eleven years to try it again. <laughs> Infestation. <laughs> try it again. Infestation. Ooh, we got close. Uh, but then again, I'm saying without Robin and, you know, I got to say without Lon, uh, without the primary, you know, the force to force, so to speak, you know, the four of us collaborating and we try, you know, and Carlos Cavazzo uh, and I uh, wrote uh, the first uh, two songs on there, singles, uh, Eat Me Up Alive, I believe, and uh, Best of Me with Warren. And I'm sure Warren feels the same way. You know, we tried to, to do what we could with it. I know he did. I know Warren did. He was really into trying to get something done with that record, you know, to make it. But to me, I you know, I'm just a firm believer on if you don't, have the proper ingredients, you're not going to get the same results. What do, we, what do we rate that one? I'll rate that a infestation three. Three. Okay. Yeah, three. It's funny when when I a lot of people really like that record. I think different people like it. Sure. Really, and uh, when I heard it, I, I wasn't my favorite. Now Greg D'Angelo introduced you and I, and I told Greg I said bad things about infestation. I hope Stephen's not going to be. And I said to you, oh, I didn't really like it. And you said, well, I care. <laughs> I know. It's like, so I don't give a fuck. 
All you can do is do the best you can when you, I mean, that's why I write so much. I mean, you know, there's so many songs that have could, could have come and gone on all of these rap records you're talking about. There are songs left over, actually. Um, so we'll see. I and think now moving out of the cellar to the present, nostalgia, I think, is where it's at for those sure. bands. I don't think there needs, my opinion, there doesn't need to be a rat album. You have your soul music. Sure, exactly. But people would love to see the band on stage. We know that's really difficult and probably... That's probably not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. And and that's okay. I can live with the, the legacy and what we've done here and there. And there's, I mean, look, you, you grow up, you have your own other interests. The people who made this band, I'm not the only one. You know, I'm sure... Uh, every other band who survived the 80s, you know, and had that kind of success, uh, would probably have other interests. Maybe somebody wants to, you know, have a cattle farm or a salmon farm or... A <laughs> well, a lot of these guys, though, that we see on the road, Tom Kiefer, for example, did not want to do Cinderella or a new record. He does mm -hmm. make his own record. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brett Michaels. So a lot of the guys who were there, another band, Poison, that opened for Rack back in the day. Um, yeah. Maybe they should send you a plan of record. They, maybe they should. All right, what else? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's there's a lot of guys. The voices are out there. Um, yeah. Vince Neil does his thing. You know. So well, it's not crazy that you're out there. You're the voice of rap. Well, look, the uh, there's no excuse for anything, right? But the thing is, you know, that's where <laughs> that's an interesting thing that these singers. Of course, we can do that. Just get a band and play. You know, but I don't call my band Rat. It is what it is. I'm the guy who wrote the songs. Two guys in your band, yeah. and, and that's what I do. You know, and so I'm out there doing what I do. And and like I said, it would be, I would get much much more accomplished in my life, not not doing something that would really not be really worth it, right? It, you know, than to have personal. Uh, happiness and you know com complacency be really uh what's the word uh i'm not sure <laughs> not either anyway so we'll take that I, edit i didn't mean to cut you off yeah. but i was thinking i was going to say two guys did try to use the name rap but then i realized actually it was all three of them they've all been a, a version of oh my god i hate i hate there's been this. a fake maybe, i know you like to erase any maybe we, we should talk about this but let's go there okay so you can edit this okay? Yeah, well, well, well yeah, I, well, so, I, it's, you would rather forget the years that you weren't involved in your own band. And I did in 1991 when I left the first time. Mm -hmm. The thing is, when it's not working properly and you, there's, you just see a train wreck up ahead, I'm not going to step back into that. You know, me caring if there was somebody singing my songs, no, I'm still getting paid. Uh, per se, uh, doesn't bother me, but it's it's not the real deal. Right. It's, like, it's misrepresentation, and especially if you didn't tell anybody that I wasn't there. And, or, or But, you know, again, I, I mean, I can't, it's just a funny word, no disrespect. I mean, look, I know Jizzy. He went in there and did his thing. I mean, what the fuck do I care? You yeah. know? Uh, well, he said that I was happy never bashed doing, him. He never bashed you. Yeah, I was happy doing my thing. And that's why I'm in the position I am in today to be able to do my own thing and present my songs with Rat as I seem fit. And what's funny Instead is Jizzy's of dragging it through the mud or something or having somebody else sing it or, or, you know. And just last week, Jizzy opened for you with Quiet Riot. It's funny oh, yeah, to see you right. both on the same bill and you guys get along. And, uh, yeah. And it was fun to see you. Headlining an arena stage. Uh, again. Yeah, that was nice. Two years of COVID keeps us all away. You yeah. try to do as much as you possibly could. You try to do streaming shows. You try sure. to stay ahead of the game. Yeah, we like did the concert. Yeah, the concert at the Whiskey was great. The stream concert. I wanted to do another one, but you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, they can be expensive to do some of those things sometimes. Yeah. Well, like I say, my friend, you only live twice, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm. We're taking this into the right place. And, you know, I got to give the band Rat, keep some integrity to that to that band, to my band. You know, uh, 
But we'll close a chapter on that. Yeah, well, that, that, on the that, cellar trip. Yeah, I, but, and uh, I think that's the most I've heard you talk about some of that stuff in a long uh, time. Yeah. So I think, but I think people are interested to hear your point. I always said people want to see you come on and give this uh, drama interview. I said it's not what he does. He, yeah. he doesn't talk shit about people when they're not around. He doesn't going to do it in front of a camera as well. Yeah, I just think that you know enough is enough. You know, and 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 I just want to keep some respect or some what integrity we can get or have you know not not with a grammy or anything but you know we did we did rat was is is a great rock band i can still say it is because you know it is a, a, a an entity it is a brand whatever but i'm going out there and representing uh, the music i wrote and having a great time we've got other interests and other things going on and as my guitar player Warren, you know, is is probably just wants to just chill and enjoy life too. I mean, look, we beat the hell out of ourselves for many years, you know. I can't even remember most of those tours, you know. I can only so, imagine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot. But now, next two years are going to be busy for yeah. you as a solo artist. Yes. Dates are filling. In. I've seen dates all the way through the end of 2022. Yeah. Is that what it's called? 2022? Yes. Yeah. 22. And then we have the Legacy record. We have the solo record at the end of the year. Um, and then I've got to do with you're trying to get that uh, uh, Rat Live record out. Um, and we'll see what happens, you know, we'll see what happens. I tell people, and I'm on I'm on the planes with him. I see how he travels just like everybody else. If you want to come see rap music, this is your chance to see it. It's not like the old days where I'll see them next time. Look, no yeah, one's right. getting any younger. There you go. And we the, the last two weeks ago, we flew eight flights in, in six days. So, and then there's planes and trains and automobiles. Bands trains, come along. Trains. Yes. Bands come a long way to play for you. And so this is your chance to, to see your favorite bands yeah, and, and also, you know, uh, uh, live in the moment because a lot of our heroes are going. You know? Yeah, and that's something that we're working on, uh, a project we're working on to, you know, give some kudos to the people still hanging around right now. I mean, that was, you know, it was an amazing decade and I'd love to, you know, I'm, we're loving embracing it and, and letting people in on the real shit. You know, not the bullshit, you know, the, the copycats and the bands later. We want to give you the real, you know, the real meat and potatoes, so to speak. There's some big shows this year. OfficialStevenPiercy.com yes. has all the dates. Some stuff's not announced, so believe me, there's more than what you see. But, of course, the M3 Festival back at M3. Sure, back at M3. And uh, Tom Field Entertainment, we have stuff in the works um, with another, uh, with Christy and us, uh, another... Yeah, so right. There's there's some Las Vegas things coming. We've been filming, and yeah, we've been doing a lot of filming and writing, and uh, hopefully delivering some really cool stuff on the personal side and uh, sharing the, uh, you know, the insights of the real business, the real what we do, what you do every day when you decide to put this uh, jacket on. Yeah, well, you and Christy make a great team. You're your fiance. People say, How do you have a fiance this time? You should be married. I am married to her. Mm -hmm. So the, the, don't fall for Facebook titles. This is as married as they get. <laughs> and I, I will say, I travel with you guys. You guys are a great team. I think people don't realize that I, you guys really work well together. Well, it's, we have a business, and it's, it's, you know, taking it seriously. It's no different than uh, I'm sure Sharon has to smack an Aussie around, you know, or something. But we have fun. We like being creative and just having fun with it. Like I say, I'm embracing it. It's it's like it's almost time to close a chapter on one thing and move on to the next. It's been that way. It's been going that way. So, you know, we'll see uh, what happens here soon. But the next two years are going to be really busy and we're quite happy. Yeah, there's a lot to look at, uh, officialstudentpiercy.com, and the uh, merchandise sales today to commemorate this release of this interview, yeah. and then also uh, auctions. There's some really great memorabilia. Way cool stuff, because we've given so much shit to the hard rock cafes over the years. I mean, literally, drum sets, everybody, Motley, and you name it, everybody's given, give. 
I have buckets of this stuff and boxes, boxes, and and we're gonna give some, you know, auction some stuff off and give our our friends, fans, friends, I call them, a, a chance to have that best I wore on this tour or that tour. It's cool. It's way cool. It's cool. And then we'll do some more of these virtual meet and greets. I don't know if you've seen it, but we did them where we have Stephen live and people can watch him sign your memorabilia. Mm -hmm. And there's stuff for people of all price levels. You know? Yeah, it's just fun stuff, man. You know, it's, it's just having a good time and delivering it to you. Here it is, you know. All right. Well, then you've heard it from the rat's mouth. Bad. Yeah. He, that, Out of the cellar into where? <laughs> I don't know. Do you know yeah. where it's next? No. And that's a great place to be. All right. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. Make sure you go to the links in the description. Sign up for everything. Visit uh, Stephen's website. Check out the tour dates. I'm there, too. You can come see both of us. Yes, Stephen, you, you don't realize these other clowns, they fly Eddie Trunkin and all these personalities. Sure. You get me for free every that's night. That's right. See? <laughs> Anyway, we look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, brother.